All right, so in this problem, I have 9 to the power of m minus 9 to the power of n is equal to 648. So based on first glance, we can tell that m is greater than n because the result is a positive number and the bases are the same. So 9 to the power of m minus 9 to the power of n, this is a positive number, meaning 9 to the power of m is greater than 9 to the power of n, and m is greater than n. So now that we know this, we can say that m is equal to n plus some number k. And now I'm going to replace m with n plus k. So now I have 9 to the power of n plus k minus 9 to the power of n is equal to 648. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 9 to the power of n plus k, that's going to equal 9 to the power of n times 9 to the power of k. Now I have this minus 9 to the power of n is equal to 648. Now if I factor out 9 to the power of n, I get 9 to the power of n times 9 to the power of k minus 1 is equal to 648. And 648 I can rewrite as 81 times 8. So now I have 9 to the power of n times 9 to the power of k minus 1 is equal to 81 times 8. Now, 9 to the power of any number, that's going to be odd, right? 9 to the power of any number is odd. And 9 to the power of any number is odd, but an odd number minus 1 is going to be an even number. So 9 to the power of n is odd, and 9 to the power of k minus 1, that's going to be even. So 81 is odd, and 8 is even. And notice how we have something in the form a number times another number is equal to another number times another number. And it's an odd number times an even number is equal to an odd number times an even number. Meaning we can set the odd numbers equal to each other and the even numbers equal to each other. So now I have 9 to the power of n is equal to 81. And I have 9 to the power of k minus 1 is equal to 8. So for 9 to the power of n equals 81, n is obviously equal to 2 because 9 to the power of 2 is equal to 81. And for 9 to the power of k minus 1 is equal to 8, this is a simple equation. I'm going to first start by adding 1 on both sides. So I have 9 to the power of k is equal to 9. And 9 to the power of what is equal to itself? 1. So k is equal to 1. Now remember how we set m equal to n plus k, meaning m is equal to n, which is 2, plus k, which is 1. So m is equal to 3. So n is equal to 2, and m is equal to 3. These are my solutions for this equation. All right, so in this problem, I have 5 to the power of x plus 5 to the power of x is equal to 7. So to start, I'm going to factor out 5 to the power of x from my left-hand side. So now I have 5 to the power of x times 1 plus 1 is equal to 7. Now 1 plus 1, that's equal to 2, so I have 5 to the power of x times 2 is equal to 7. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2, so then these two cancel out, and I get 5 to the power of x is equal to 7 over 2. Now from here, I'm going to take the log on both sides. So now I have log 5 to the power of x is equal to log 7 over 2. Now if I have something in the form log a to the power of b, I can move this x1 and b to the front. So it's going to equal b times log a. So in this case, I have log 5 to the power of x, and I can move x to the front. So now I have x times log 5 is equal to log 7 over 2. Now, I'm going to divide both sides by log 5. These two cancel out. And I get x is equal to log 7 over 2 over log 5. Now, if I have something in the form log a over b, this is equal to log a minus log of b. 
So in this case, I've log 7 over 2, and I can rewrite that as log 7 minus log 2. And I have this over log 5. So now that this is all simplified, we, all we need to do is plug in the values of log 7, log 2, and log 5. So log 7 is equal to 0 0.8451. Log 2 is equal to 0 0.3010. And log 5 is equal to 0 0.6990. So I have x is equal to 0 0.8451 minus 0 0.3010. And I have this over 0 0.6990. So if we simplify all of this, we get that x is equal to 0 0.7784. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of 4 is equal to 1. So I'm going to first start by subtracting 1 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of 4 minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, x to the power of 4, I can rewrite this as x to the power of 2 times 2. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So x to the power of 2 times 2. I can write this as x to the power of 2 to the power of 2. Now this minus 1 is equal to 0. Now 1 is the same thing as 1 squared. So I have x squared to the power of 2 minus 1 squared is equal to 0. If I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. So in this case, a is x squared and b is 1. So I have x squared plus 1 times x squared minus 1. And this is equal to 0. Now, Remember how now this is a this is equal to this actually gives me three equate or sorry two equations. I have x squared plus one is equal to zero, and I have x squared minus one is equal to zero. So for x squared plus 1 equals 0, I'm going to start by subtracting 1 on both sides. So these two cancel out, and I get x squared is equal to negative 1. Now if I take the square root on both sides, the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of negative 1, if you guys already know, is i. So I have positive and negative i. And for x squared minus 1 equals 0, I'm going to add 1 on both sides. So I get x squared is equal to 1. If I take the square root, I get x is equal to positive or negative 1. So that's two more solutions. So these are my four solutions to this problem.